Welcome back, and I hope your data collection went well. This tutorial will help you with a process that is really fun because this is where you get to explore more deeply the answers to your research questions. The goal of action research is to explore answers to questions where you don't know the answer, and hopefully this process of examining data will help you to at least find an initial answer to your research questions. Exploring data can often give you new and different perspectives on what happened. In the activities for this tutorial, we're going to be working with data that you collected, and we're going to be analyzing it in three steps. First, you're going to organize your data, so find out what your storyline is. Second, you're going to explore the data to develop your story. And third, you're going to display your data to share your story with others. So let's talk about organizing your data to find your storyline. Of course, organizing your data will depend on what data you have collected. You might have participation rates, attendance rates, time on tasks, questions on surveys, test scores, observational notes. Sometimes action researchers overlook important sources of data. They think that only surveys count as data. But sometimes indirect measures, such as how many people came to a meeting, how long they stay after the meeting to discuss ideas, uh, changes in attendance records, or action items that were discussed during the meeting can all serve as meaningful evidence. In classrooms, parent conferences can actually be a great time to collect data on student engagement and student learning because the kinds of things that kids share with their parents are often things that have been really effective in the classroom. If collected in a systematic way, avoiding dependence on memory, all of these can be sources of evidence to include in your data analysis. Now let's talk about organizing your data. The first tool that will help you in thinking about your data is your research question. And if you developed it in the way that we suggested in these tutorials, describing in the first part your action, if I, Describe your action, how will it affect, and then describe to you the interactions that you are expecting. If you use this way of organizing your cycle of research, then you might want to take your data and organize it into the evidence that indicates that the action actually happened or tells you a little bit about how the action happened. So, for example, if you were going to do something with changing the way you organize meetings, then things like who came to the meetings, whether or not they were able to use the new tools that you introduced to the meeting, uh, and their reaction to these new tools all might be organized under evidence about the action. And then the interaction, evidence that can be used to explore the outcome of your action research, might be what decisions were made collectively, who participated in them, and their sense on increased uh, pattern of, of collective decision making. Another way you could organize your data is to look at the boxes on your logic model. Because in your logic model, you were looking specifically at how inputs, the things that you were going to do, influence the outputs, which are usually divided into immediate, medium, and long-term outcomes. And you're going to be looking for the short-term or immediate outcomes you can also organize your data in terms of themes. And these themes might be ones that you already thought of before you did your action research, or they might be themes that have come from reading through your data. So after repeated reading through what you have collected, you might start to see that there are maybe three or four really major reactions or outcomes that you want to use to organize your description of your data. In some cases, a temporal frame will work. You can analyze the data that refer to the first part of your project and then the second part of your project and then the last part of your project. Once you've collected your data sources and organized them in a way that will help answer the research question, you are ready for the next stage, which is to explore the data. And this is where you develop your story. In order to have research findings, you have to do a great deal of looking. <laughs> looking means that you don't just read the data once but that you read it over and over again, searching for patterns, for relationships, for ideas on how to condense it so that others can better understand it. 
Analyzing data is a bit like a treasure hunt. You might find something that leads you to a really valuable insight. Your data forms, your knowledge of research methods, and your resources, especially in terms of time, will all influence how you analyze your data. So if this is your first time and it feels a bit strange to you, don't worry. You will develop skills as you try and get feedback and try again. Something all researchers have to keep in mind is that resources are always limited. In this case, the resource we're talking about is time. We don't want you to design a plan that is going to take so many hours that you won't be able to complete it. So it's important to consider the scale of the analysis as you're trying to decide how you're going to approach the data. If you want to do something that is more detailed and you have a lot of data, one of the things you can do is sample the data. So you don't have to analyze all the data. You don't have to explore all the topics that you collected data on. You can decide which are most important and you can sample which data you want to analyze. All of these will help you keep your research analysis at a manageable scale. However, there's one thing that's essential when you do research of any kind, and that is researchers are extremely careful about the process as they are doing the analysis of data. They record every decision and detail in the process. Think back to your math teacher who wanted you to show your work so she could see your thinking or he could see your thinking as you did your math problems. It's the same idea. We want to see the process that you went through. This is because the way that researchers have for creating some assurance that you are making the best effort to learn from your data is that it's somebody should be able to repeat your process and they should get similar results. So one of the things we do when we're coding data is we create a code book and we put in that code book all the decisions that we make. Now teachers will find that they've already been using a code book. When teachers go to assess student learning, they often use a rubric. So the code book is much like a rubric for helping you be consistent about your analysis. Sometimes the data analysis is straightforward. For example, the number of people who respond yes on a survey is easy to compute and we assume that another person with good math skills is going to come along and they would have exactly the same number. But if you're trying to make sense of students' written responses about what they learn, say, in a project-based activity, then the activity is a little more difficult. But there are lots of ways to simplify the task. For example, you could decide on what responses you are looking for and then you can code the presence or absence of those responses. Sometimes coding a part of speech can help you understand the data. For example, if you are looking for increased collaboration, you might look to see if they use collective pronouns or individual pronouns to describe their learning. Technology can also play a role in helping you understand or visualize the data that you might otherwise miss. So using a program like Wordle or any program that does word frequency, you can look at the kinds of words that students use in their writing, and you can also compare individual patterns with whole class patterns. So this can be a way of starting to understand what the content is in the data that you are analyzing. The really creative aspect of action research is that you're free to develop your own methods of analyzing the data. As long as you share what you did and a reasonable person sees the value of the analysis, you can find your own measures. Of course, it is important to share your research design and analysis plans with others because they might be able to see either the benefits or the pitfalls of the methods that you have selected. And the other thing that's really important is that you look at your data with a critical eye. You are not trying to prove that your action research activity was wonderful. You are trying to understand what it was about the project that you engaged in that worked effectively and what are the things that didn't work as well as you would have liked them to have worked. You're trying to understand the mechanisms of change. A negative finding can be as important as a positive finding in helping you develop your ideas. And finally, you need to display the data. 
That's uh, telling your story. The last step is to find some way to represent or share your data with your audience. Sometimes things like tables and figures can be effective to showing the data, but you might also find a flow chart or a concept map or another representation that will help you share what you have learned with others. If you remember that your task is to take all of the work that you have done and all of the analysis that you have done and summarize it in a way that helps other people make sense of it. So you might start a section with a statement like, the data suggests that most of the sixth graders were actively engaged in the project. Then this would be followed by the evidence that indicates that students were engaged. In your next section, you might want to focus on student learning. And you might say something like, there were mixed results in terms of student learning. This project seemed to be especially productive for the low performing students. This should be followed by evidence that supports this claim. The resources and the videos will help you with your process of data analysis. And remember that data analysis is a skill that you will develop over time. Don't expect to do a complex data analysis for your first cycle. But the more you pay attention to data, the more you will see how you can use data, and it will help you understand what it is about your activity that leads to the outcomes that you are looking for. Doing action research helps you develop your own theories of learning and theories of change. And as Dr. Whitehead likes to point out, action researchers are living their theories as you are constantly engaged in a process of exploring what factors influence change. Next time we'll focus on reflection. So I'll see you, I'll see you back for tutorial nine and uh, we'll talk more about how you learn from reflecting on your action.